So here's some more examples that we're going to apply the power rule to. These have um, different powers. We have roots, fractions. So let's talk about how we can handle these using the power rule. With this one, what you want to do is change any kind of roots and radicals, change that into a rational power first. So what I'll begin with is I'm going to change this into the one-fourth power, the power inside divided by the index, that's how you change it back over into a, a rational power. Then you're going to apply the power rule. And yeah, you can still apply the power rule even if it's not a whole number, you can still do that with fractions. Alright, so let's do the derivative. One-fourth comes down, subtract one from the original power, and it's going to be negative three-fourths. Now this, if you don't want to have a negative power, we can change that. So I'm going to rewrite that. I have one on top, four, and then I'll put x to the three-fourths down below. And you can either leave it as a three-fourths power, or if you'd like to change it back into a radical, you could do that as well, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it here as a rational power there. So as long as you get rid of the negative exponents, that's the main thing. You can, you can leave your answer there uh, as a rational power. Next, if you have this kind of power here, the x is down below, you want to change it into a negative power. So first, we're going to rewrite this as 2x to the negative 3. The th this is down below, so anytime you bring something across the division bar, it changes the sign of the exponent. So I have 2x to the negative 3. We're going to take the derivative of that one, applying the power rule. So what will happen here is we have a 2 there, and then the negative 3 is going to come down in front, x, and then that you got to subtract 1 from this power, so be careful you're subtracting from that. So negative 3 minus 1 will give you negative 4. Then the last thing you're going to do is just rewrite it, again with positive exponents. That's a negative 6 that will be on top, and on the bottom you can put x to the 4th. So circle my answers here, there's that one. The answer for this one is this, negative 6 over x to the 4th. The last one. We're first going to change this into negative power x plus x to the negative 1. So I'll do that as my first step. I'll apply the power rule to each of those separately. With this, okay, whenever you have an x that's raised to the first power, the shortcut way of finding the derivative is just simply write the coefficient that comes in front. Remember, there's a 1 that's here, and when we apply the power rule, 1 comes down, subtract 1 from the exponent, you're always going to get x to the 0 power. So whenever you have just x by itself, the answer is just going to be the number in front. Kind of think of that as when you have y equals mx plus b, the number in front of the x is always going to be your slope. When you do a derivative, that's slope. So you can think of that if, there, if the line was originally just a, a 1x, the slope of that is 1. Okay, so when we do the derivative, derivative of 1x is just 1 this power comes down minus 1. Subtract 1 from that power, that's going to be a minus 2. And we just change this back over to where we don't have any negative exponents. And you get 1 minus 1 over x squared. And that would be your answer on that one. You don't need to worry about getting common denominators. It's okay to leave your answer uh, just like that as it is.